Batman Year One is by far the ultimate, the absolute best Batman origin story. But, but it ain't perfect. And I'm gonna tell you why. Batman Year One redefined Batman's origin in DC's main continuity. Following Crisis on Infinite Earths, when DC determined that their multiverse was unfriendly to readers, they rebooted everything. You, you hear that, Marvel? Their multiverse was unfriendly. Yours might be too, a little bit. Year One redefined the Batman character, and it's influenced a lot of Batman content that came after. Batman Begins, the whole theme of Bruce learning to become a symbol to fight fear was inspired by Year One. Bruce's journey back to Gotham, his relationship with Gordon, the GCPD, mirrors a lot of what happens in year one. Also, the scene where he summons the bats when rescuing the better version of Rachel Dawes. Can we all just admit that Katie Holmes was better than Maggie Gyllenhaal? Can we just admit that? The Joker set up at the end, not to mention the Batman with the greatest on-screen Batman ever, my boy, Battinson. The Gotham corruption you see in that movie, the grounded, gritty story that noir feel, the Catwoman dynamic. It, it all feels very year one-ish, even though this is year two. Year one also sets up the best Batman story ever told, The Long Halloween. Written by Jeff Loeb, the art by the amazing Tim Sale, rest in peace Tim Sale. It's a direct continuation of year one, focusing on Gotham's organized crime, ran by the Falcons until Batman supervillains take over. It's a great Two-Face origin. If you're a fan of the Penguin, you'll recognize a lot of the names from this comic show up in that show. The scars on Carmine's face in The Long Halloween are from when Selina became Catwoman in year one and scratched his face. For all you WWE fans out there, that's Triple H level of long-term storytelling right there. Hush, also written by Jeff Loeb, with art from the incomparable Jim Lee, one of my favorite artists. References year one and flashbacks of Batman and Catwoman. There's also a really good animated movie, which feels like it almost is a page by page recreation and animation. All of these things influenced by this amazing groundbreaking comic book that really was just written to, I guess, fix the screwed up multiverse. What do I love about this comic? So much. I love the noir feel and look. The artwork is phenomenal. The story is grounded, it's gritty, it's violent, it's Batman. This comic was recolored for collected editions, and they moved away from that newspaper print, which, I mean, it's a little bit before my time. Um, I've read both versions, and as much as I can appreciate the old style, I prefer the newer one. It, it pops more, just but they're, they're both great. Y year one is really an origin story for Batman, Jim Gordon, and Catwoman slash Selina Kyle. It also introduces Carmine Falcone, Johnny Vitti, a more sarcastic, dry version of Alfred, uh, among plenty of others. Seeing both Bruce and Gordon arrive in Gotham was a great open with their perspectives being different but similar. You know, Bruce is on the plane. He's saying, I, I wish I would have been on, you know, at the ground level. Jim Gordon's on the train and he's going, when Barbara comes, she's taking the plane for sure. She's flying in. She ain't going to be sitting on this damn train. But they're both going to Gotham for different, different reasons, but not really. And I don't think they know it at the time. The transformation of Bruce Wayne to Batman from man to myth it is done so well. Too often origins are rushed and we... And here we see Bruce go from vowing to do something, to training to do something, to trying and failing to do something, to eventually figuring out what that something he really needs to do is. And we get to see every win and fail in between. He fights Selena as Bruce, well, Bruce with a scar. He struggles with some low-level criminals. He gets shot. The police capture him. And I think this is where, at least in this story, where he, he establishes that no-kill rule. He escapes police custody. Their car blows up. Car's on fire. But damn, he ain't going to leave them there. He says something along the lines of, you know, they got family. Not, I can't leave them there. He saves the cops that were trying to take him in. I think that's where he establishes that no kill rule. Year one really gets Gotham right. Something that the Nolan versus struggled with so bad. They just got them there is just like Chicago. Gotham, it's the home of corrupt cops, mobsters, pimps, criminally insane escaped prisoners, and really just an all-around shitty place to live. 
where the sun never shines, rain almost never stops. And you feel that reading this comedy did just such a good job of placing you in that element. Why is it not perfect? Small things, small things. Why is it not perfect? Small things. One, it feels more like a Jim Gordon origin at times, at times than it does a Batman. So that, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, both Batman and Jim Gordon narrate this comic. You can see by the different colored boxes. One's Batman, one's Jim. Gordon establishes himself really early as a really good cop amongst a lot of bad cops. He stands up for what's right, even when it's inconvenient, even when it's not easy. He won't take bribes. He, he, don't, he doesn't get down with a lot of the things that the cops around him do, which causes a major conflict. One of my favorite Jim Gordon moments in this comic is when he gets revenge on Flass. Flass and his buddies jump Jim Gordon because he ain't fitting in, he ain't playing nice with them, and then Jim strikes back. He finds out where he's at. He waits for him to leave. He waits for Flass to leave his friend's house all drunk, follows him, drives him off the road, handcuffs him, strips him, leaves him on the side of the road, car totaled, embarrasses the shit out of him. I love it. Ultimate payback. Ultimate, don't mess with me. Jim Gordon establishes himself as a badass. We see Jim's flaws. We see Jim really contemplating whether he should bring a child into this, at least this city. We see Jim in his relationship with Essen becomes a little too close. Jim's not perfect. I think that we see that a lot here. Jim's not perfect. Bruce ain't perfect. And it really gives you a good idea, insight to who these characters really are. The most epic panel in this comic for me is Batman in the shadows, in the darkness. He rolls up on the mob. He rolls up on the corrupt cops, drops his smoke bomb. All you see is his silhouette. Great piece of art. Ladies, gentlemen, you have eaten well. You've eaten Gotham's wealth, its spirit. Your feast is nearly over. From this moment on, none of you are safe. I, I, get, I get chills with that. To me, this is where he truly becomes Batman. He learns it's not all about beating the shit out of people. It's not all about physical presence. It's about striking fear in the hearts, which he does so masterfully here. He becomes that vigilante that we all, maybe we all do, we all learn to love. Right here in year one. GCPD setting up stupid traps for him. He's way smarter than that. We, we see how smart he is. A, a little bit of it. We see his influence in real time. He inspires Selena to become Catwoman. Now, with all that being said, why is it not perfect, you ask? Why? It's one thing. It's a small thing. It's one thing that was a miss for me. After all that, Bruce learning to become Batman, the costume, the darkness, the aura. After all that, the climax is during the fucking day. We got Bruce saving Gordon's baby. Gordon loses his glasses so he can't tell it's Bruce Wayne. What the fuck? Why wasn't Batman there? Where's the costume? Where's the darkness? Where's the aura? Where's all that shit? Why was it not at night? Why? Not a big deal. But that's a small thing to me that it's why it's not quite perfect. But it is the absolute, the ultimate Batman origin story. It's a must read. If you're watching this and you haven't read it, go out, go read it right now or watch it. There's a movie. I also wish that we could have seen at least one panel at the end with Batman, Gordon together. Gordon's got the Joker card. I'd love to see him pass it to him like, like we see in Batman Begins. That's probably the one thing Batman Begins as an origin story does better than year one is that ending. I love the ending of Batman Begins. Gordon, Batman, he talks about a guy named Joker, which then leads us to Batman versus Joker. Anyways, share your thoughts. on If, if you've read Batman Year One, share your thoughts. Let us know how much you love it. If you don't, 
Let us know why, but something's probably wrong with you. Um, if you do agree with me, was the ending perfect? Was it not? Should they have changed some stuff? I don't know. But at the end of the day, Batman Year One, the absolute, the iconic, the ultimate Batman origin story. It's a must read for any Batman fan. And for all you starting out, I've never read, I get this question a lot. I've never read comics. Where should I start? Hey, start with Batman Year One. Phenomenal story. One of, not one of, the best superhero of all time. My boy, Batman, Bruce Wayne. And last thing I'll say, we all know, and I think it's established in this, Bruce Wayne's the mask. Batman is the identity. And we see him find that identity here in year one. Hit subscribe, like this, check out our podcast, check out our other videos, subscribe to Only Comics. Appreciate you watching.